Whenever Wala Awad watches videos from last year's pro-democracy sitting at Sudan's army headquarters, a wave of nostalgia hits her. She says every day held a meaning, but the one that overwhelms her is the memory of April 11th, the day the president of 30 years, Omar al-Bashir, was overthrown. I was so shocked. At the same time, it was like, I was like more than happy, happy not even a word to describe how I was feeling. No one could believe that would happen because we were in the street and we were fighting al-Bashir, but we didn't believe it's going to be like fall down that easy. Protests against Bashir and his government started in December 2018, sparked by shortages in bread and fuel. They quickly turned into demonstrations demanding he step down. His security forces responded with tear gas and live ammunition. In April, defiant protesters started a sit-in at the army headquarters in Khartoum and other cities across the country. Days later, the military stepped in. Since Bashir was ousted, there's been major changes in the political scene. The former ruling party, which he founded and led until a few weeks before he was overthrown, is now disbanded. And a government committee is investigating the party's leading members. But with a revolution which had freedom, peace and justice as its top demands, some feel that change is slow. Sudan still faces shortages of basic necessities and a severe economic crisis. It has still not achieved complete peace and stability. Bashir is now in prison after he was tried and found guilty of corruption. For people like Ali Ahmed from Darfur, where the war led to an arrest warrant being issued for Bashir from the International Criminal Court, the justice is slow in coming. Our revolution government uh, deal with issues as if they deal with the ordinary situation. They do not want to arrest uh, the corrupted NCP. They do not want to... Uh, uh, stop the criminal uh, or the people who killed our nation in Darfur. Politically, the new government sworn in in August is facing challenges. It's struggling to get Sudan off the U.S. list of countries sponsoring terrorism, which it says is affecting its economy. The state of it has led to protests. The forces of freedom and change, which represented the revolution movement, blamed the protests on Bashir and his party. We in the FFC know that members of the former ruling party are still working to come back to power, but our revolution is still going on and we won't disregard any information we get because we don't want this revolution to fail. We don't want to be like the government in 1989, which was warned there will be a coup. They ignored and were eventually overthrown. Those who protested against Bashir say they'll work hard to make sure the new government succeeds. A year on from when change began, the path of transition to a new Sudan remains long and filled with challenges. Hiba Morgan Al Jazeera, Khartoum.